In the spring of 1846, a group of American pioneers set out from Illinois to seek a new life in the fertile lands of California. They were led by George Donner, a wealthy farmer, and James Reed, a businessman. They joined a larger wagon train that followed the Oregon Trail, a well-established route across the American frontier. But along the way, they made a fateful decision that would change their destiny forever. They chose to take a shortcut known as the Hastings Cutoff that promised to save them time and distance. But instead of a smooth and easy path, they found themselves trapped in a nightmare of hardship, hunger, and horror. This is the story of the Donner Party, one of the most tragic and controversial episodes in the history of westward migration. The Donner Party consisted of 87 people, including 29 men, 15 women, and 43 children. They had a variety of backgrounds, motivations, and personalities. Some were seeking religious freedom, some were looking for economic opportunities, and some were simply drawn by the allure of the West. They were optimistic, adventurous, and ambitious. They had no idea what lay ahead of them. The Hastings Cutoff was a new route that claimed to cut off 300 miles from the Oregon Trail. It was promoted by Lansford Hastings, a self-styled explorer and entrepreneur who had never actually traveled the route himself. He wrote a guidebook called The Emigrant's Guide to Oregon and California, in which he described the cutoff as a most excellent wagon road. He also sent letters to the emigrants, urging them to take his route and promising to meet them and guide them personally. The Donner Party was intrigued by his offer and decided to follow his advice. They left the main wagon train at Fort Bridger in present-day Wyoming and headed south toward the Great Salt Lake in present-day Utah. They expected to find Hastings waiting for them there, but they were in for a rude awakening. The Hastings cutoff turned out to be a disaster. Instead of a wagon road, they found a barren and inhospitable wasteland. They had to cross the Great Salt Lake Desert, a 70-mile stretch of salt flats, sand and rocks with no water, grass or shade. Their oxen died of thirst and exhaustion, their wagons broke down and their supplies dwindled. They lost precious time and energy, and many of them began to lose hope. They also realized that they had been deceived by Hastings, who had left them a note saying that he had gone ahead with another group and that they should follow his trail. But his trail was poorly marked and often led them to dead ends, impassable canyons, and steep mountains. They had to backtrack, blaze their own trail, and chop their way through dense forests. They cursed Hastings for his lies and blamed each other for their misfortunes. Tensions rose, tempers flared, and violence erupted. One of the incidents resulted in the death of John Snyder, a teamster, who was stabbed by James Reed in a heated argument. Reed was banished from the group and had to ride ahead alone, hoping to reach California and send back help. The Donner Party finally reached the eastern edge of the Sierra Nevada, the last major obstacle before California, in late October. They were already two months behind schedule and had lost a third of their cattle and wagons. They hoped to cross the mountains before the winter snows blocked their way, but they were too late. They encountered an early and severe winter that dumped several feet of snow on the mountain passes. They were forced to stop and make camp at a frozen lake now known as Donner Lake near present-day Truckee, California. They were only 150 miles away from their destination, but they might as well have been on another planet. They were isolated, starving and freezing. They had no shelter except for their tents and wagons and no firewood except for the trees they could chop down. They had no food except for the few animals they could hunt or slaughter and the meager rations they had left. They had no communication except for the occasional letters they could send or receive by the few travelers who managed to cross the mountains. They had no hope except for the possibility of rescue by the settlers in California. They had to endure one of the most brutal winters ever recorded in the Sierra Nevada that lasted from November 1846 to March 1847. They had to survive one of the most desperate and horrifying ordeals in human history. They had to resort to cannibalism. Cannibalism is the ultimate taboo, the most shocking and repulsive act that a human being can commit. But for the Donner Party, it was a matter of life and death. As their food ran out and their bodies wasted away, they faced a terrible choice to eat or to die. Some of them refused to partake and died of starvation. 
Some of them waited until their companions died naturally and then ate their flesh. Some of them killed their animals and then their pets and then their friends and then their family members and then strangers and then enemies. Some of them ate only the muscles, some of them ate the organs, some of them ate the bones, some of them ate the skin, some of them ate the hair, some of them ate everything. Some of them did it secretly, some of them did it openly, some of them did it reluctantly, some of them did it eagerly, some of them did it with guilt, some of them did it with indifference, some of them did it with madness, some of them survived, some of them did not. The Donna Party's ordeal lasted for four months, until the first rescue party arrived in February 1847. They found a scene of horror and despair, of corpses and skeletons, of blood and bones, of madness and misery. They also found 48 survivors, mostly women and children, who were barely alive and who begged for food and help. The rescuers gave them what they could and tried to take them out of the mountains. But the journey was still perilous and the snow was still deep. They had to leave behind some of the survivors who were too weak or unwilling to move and who died before the next rescue party came. They also had to abandon some of their rescuers who succumbed to exhaustion or injury and who were eaten by the survivors. It took four rescue parties and two more months to bring out all the survivors. Of the 87 members of the Donner Party, only 39 made it to California alive. The Donner Party tragedy shocked and fascinated the nation and the world. It became a symbol of the perils and the price of westward expansion and a lesson in the limits of human endurance and morality. It also became a source of controversy and debate as different accounts and interpretations emerged and as different survivors and rescuers claimed or denied their involvement in cannibalism. The Donner Party story has inspired countless books, articles, films, songs, artworks and monuments and has entered the popular imagination and folklore. It has also raised many questions and challenges such as how far would you go to survive? What would you do in their situation? How would you judge them? How would you remember them? The Donner Party story is not only a historical event but also a moral dilemma, a psychological puzzle and a human drama. It is a story that haunts and intrigues us that repels and attracts us, that challenges and changes us. It is a story that is beyond cannibalism. It is the true story of the Donner Party.